I must admit, I'm a movie fanatic. So uh, you're right, when I'm in Japan, I don't get to see any films at all, except Tom Cruise films are the only ones that come to our local cinema. But I make up for lost time when I'm not in, um, in Japan, and left to my own devices, I might see six films in a week. So it's probably, film and sports are two of my great passions, I suppose, enduringly. See, we are not something about you, films. What were some of the films you watched this year that kind of appealed to you? And how do you watch them? On Netflix uh, when you come here? Or how do you watch them? Well, I love surrendering to something. So my greatest happiness comes when I'm completely absorbed in something. So for that reason, I always try to see them in the cinema. Because I find if I'm watching them at home, I'm so subject to interruptions. I'm literally transported. If I'm in a f cinema, I once wrote a piece about films as, as public transport and a way to see the world. I just saw Amy, and that was, of course, riveting and terrifying. I just interviewed Asif Kapadia on about Amy. Tell me what was riveting and uh, interesting about the film for you. I'm jealous of you. <laughs> I know nothing about him and I would give anything to ask him all kinds of questions. I asked, I saw um, Senna a few years ago and I thought this was even better than You're Senna. You're jealous of little me? Yeah, well you get to talk to all these interesting people while I'm just sitting at my desk in Kyoto <laughs> wishing I could be watching Amy. Um, but I think one of the things that moved me was that I, like most of us, am just a victim of the medium. So the only thing I knew about Amy Winehouse before the film was what I had heard in the tabloids, which couldn't have been more distorting. So see, to see this young woman of such warmth and spirit and wit and style and huge vulnerability. And I thought part of the power of this film and the clever directorial choice was to see her through the perspective of those three old friends of hers. And they gave both a humanity and a sweetness to it. We're used to seeing talking heads, but to have her oldest friends from girlhood watch their great friend dissolve before them, um, I thought that gave the movie a, a whole dimension and accessibility that most documentaries don't. Uh, and I suppose just the interplay between the power of her voice and the lack of power she had in her life uh, was really moving, because I think all of us are inclined when we hear about Britney Spears or Lady Gaga, or whoever it is, um, just to grab onto a one sentence reductive capsule of their life that really has nothing to do with them. And so I think this film shamed me because it reminded me that most of the people we read about in the press are so much more complex and so much more human than the image that is brought to us. Uh, it will stay with me for a long, long time, I think.